Another Ants on a Rock video. Welcome to the Ant Corner. A guide on creating your own tubs and tubes setup. So this is one of the most basic enclosures you can use for your ants. And I also find it is one of the most effective and most natural ways to bring up your ants whilst they're still at low numbers and in their test tube. You can use anything from a little box like you get in a Chinese restaurant or an Outworld or even a storage box or anything else. I'm going to use my spare Outworld I got from Best Ants UK. Again, I highly recommend using stuff like this because they are brilliant. They come with the attachments on the side and they do come with a vented lid. This will all make it easier when you come to attaching a nest box later on. Now, it's a very simple process to make a tubes and tubs set up. Um, I would not recommend using soil for it. I would always recommend using sand and I will explain why. So we're going to start with a bag of sand. Now I get this sand from ant suppliers, mainly Best Ants UK, but I have used other suppliers and there is a list in the description of all good UK suppliers that I've used. So make sure you check out the description. There's also lots of other helpful links in there to any newbie and keeper. So really do make sure you check out that description and just have a little flick through and customize yourself with what's going on in the ant world. So, as I said, we're gonna start with a little layer of dry sand. Now I use dry sand because if you use anything like soil or anything moist, they're going to want to dig into it and nest in your outworld, which isn't what you want at this stage. Now I always like to keep a bit back and I'll show you why as well. So just make sure you've got enough, cover the bottom. It doesn't have to be a deep layer. In fact, again, if you use a deep layer, they will want to dig in it. So that's not helpful. You want to keep them in the test tube at this point for as long as they can possibly fit in there. Also, at this point, I think it is really important to have that base layer down. So when you do stick your test tube of ants in, which I'm going to do now, it's got something to sit on. Now, this gives you the chance, an opportunity, to remove your tin foil, which I shall do now. So that's the tin foil we've got. I don't actually have any ants in this test tube. This is just for show. So what I would do next with the last bit of sand is use that to cover the test tube. Again, ants like to be in the dark. So this is the natural thing for them. Bury that test tube. Make sure you leave the water chamber at the end exposed and then tip the rest into the outworld to make it nice and even. So, as you can see, the test tube is now almost completely covered. We've left the water chamber exposed so we can tell when they're running out of water. We've left the end of the test tube open and exposed again. So, the smaller species I find they like to build like a little barrier out of the sand. They'll literally take bits of sand into the front of the test tube about here where the where it starts to get dark and they'll build a little barrier and they'll make the entrance to their test tube very very small. This is basically a defense method so that they can defend the entrance to their nest better. It's completely natural don't need to worry if you see them taking the substrate into the test tube. For larger species, I like to do things like this. Add in maybe a little rock on one side, but still leaving that gap exposed. Now that's still quite a considerable gap. So what else I like to do is add in a few pieces of sphagnum moss. Just a few pieces scattered about so the larger species can come out, they'll forage and collect these pieces and they'll end up piling them up 
around the entrance of their test tube, like so. Again, this is just hiding the entrance of their test tube. It's completely natural and normal, and it's something that you want them to do. The more comfortable your ants feel, the more likely they are to start producing brood and getting further on into their colony stage. The next benefit of the tubs and tubes set up is you can add a spare water test tube or you can fill up a honey feeder, put that in and you've got lots of space there. You can add in your worms and feed the colony really easily um, without disturbing the test tube at all. So that's really handy and important rather than having to take the cotton wool out and potentially vibrating and shaking the test tube as you're doing it, sticking food technically straight into their nest, which can be a little bit stressful and disruptive. So there you have it. That is a simple tubs and tubes setup. The next thing you need to be thinking about is a barrier. What kind of barrier you're gonna use much depends on your budget, the place you live, depending on humidity levels, and really what type of ant you're going to keep. Some barriers work more effectively than others. Some ants can cross pretty much everything. The first and probably the cheapest is vegetable oil or olive oil. Any kind of oil that you use in your kitchen, you take a cotton wool bud, just dab that on so it's got oil on, and rub it around the top of your enclosure. This will hopefully prevent most species from crossing it. Next we have Fluon or PTFE. This stuff is really good, it's what all the professional ant keepers use, but it is a little bit more expensive. Um, but I do find it is really good and it works for almost all species of ants that I've come across, although I have found some which get over it. Mainly due to humidity levels, I think. The last and most effective method that I've found is the talcum powder and rubbing alcohol solution. You mix these into a fine paste and rub it around the outside of your enclosure, much like you do the oils. As the rubbing alcohol dries away, it leaves the residue of the talcum powder around the outside rim of the enclosure. Most ants will find this really difficult to cross and when they try to cross it, they bring a little bit of talcum powder back down to the ground with them. So eventually you will see where they're starting to wear away at your barrier. You'll be able to replace it without having lots of escapees beforehand, hopefully. But this isn't always guaranteed. But I find this is a little bit easier than the PTFE, which is actually fairly clear. There is several on the market. Some of them are cloudy, some of them are clear. My one's been very clear and actually I struggle to see when it's starting to wear thin. So I find this is a really good solution. For my polyrachis dives, I have been using this above my PTFE because they have been crossing the PTFE in certain areas. But again, I think this is down to the humidity and watering levels washing away the PTFE after a while. And now a few of the benefits of the tubs and tubes set up. Mainly being, you can add the food and water without having to disturb the colony at all. This is really beneficial, again, for the lack of stress with the queen. Hopefully it will speed up brood production. And if anything, it will just keep the colony nice and stress-free and living in a more natural environment. I like to sprinkle the food about more often then just leaving it in the same place and this gives them again a more natural feeling of foraging rather than finding food in the same place every time I like to mix up their lifestyle. Another major benefit of this setup is the way the sand is over the top. When you do want to do your checks and I wouldn't recommend doing them too often maybe once every two weeks all you need to do is push back that layer of sand and that gives you clear visual access into what's going on in the test tube. You'll be able to see the queen in there with her brood and her workers. And hopefully, because you've kept it in the red, they still won't be too disturbed. And that is, again, fairly easy to cover back up, leaving it the way it was. 
Again, I wouldn't recommend doing this when you've got a bit of a larger colony. Just leave them to it really and just keep adding the food in and wait until you add a different nest box till you can see the brood. One of the main benefits that I've found is the ability just to watch them living in a natural sort of environment. They come out and forage on their own terms. They've locked up their test tube on their own terms and they're doing everything in a very, very natural way. If you attach a nest box, say here, when they get too big for their test tube, they will go looking for a new nest area. So this nest here, as long as it's humidified and temperatures everything it needs to be, they're going to want to move in. So leave it there, ready for them to move in when they start getting a bit bigger. Then you'll probably find at night when you least expect it, all the ants will disappear from your test tube into your new nest. That is a great time to start adding another outworld on the other side as well. Normally for the second outworld I'd be looking to do either a naturalistic setup or a part and part. So that will give us ability to add in a cleanup crew such as springtails and isopods which will make their way into the sand enclosure and also the nest helping keep in any hazardous moulds under control. See, I like to do that because it's really beneficial for the longevity of a healthy colony. But it isn't vitally important. Which really brings me to a few of the cons. If you add too much decoration, I mean we could add a few more stones. But now it's starting to look busy. We add the water tower back in and a spare test tube of water. Start adding food and it starts to get very busy. When they start having a litter pile and there's a few carcasses about, you might well get a bit of mould in there. Um, it might not be the most sterile environment and again it's very busy and there's a lot going on. The maintenance isn't going to be the easiest. But it is easier than doing it in the straight test tube. So pros and cons again. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to finish with a few clips of my colonies in a tubs and tubes set up currently. This will give you an idea of the different methods that I've used and how it's worked out for me. Again, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing a series of these care guides and do make sure you check out that description as well because there's so many helpful links and other bits in there. It would be silly not to have a look. See you later, Ant fans.